we are making a takeout favorite under 20 minutes and you are going to love it. Today we are making one of my favorites which is pepper steak and we are making it so much better than what you can get at a takeout and I'm thrilled to share it with you. So let's get rolling. The first things first, first things first, um, your cut of meat. Now, traditionally you'd wanna use something like flank, okay? However, when I shop for these recipes and when I write recipes, I always write them with I write as many as I can with the ability for you to change what you have to to either fit, you know, fit your time, what you can find, price, all of that. At my local grocery store, Flank is going for $18 a pound, while sirloin is going for $7 a pound. So sirloin is what I chose for this recipe. It works so well. It's tender, delicious, affordable compared to the flank. Um, and like I said, it works just as well. If your store has a flank that's more available, then get the flank. So, you know, work with what you've got. What I wanna tell you is a great tip if you are going to, if you're gonna go cut your steak into like little strips for a stir fry or whatever, make sure you pop it in the freezer for like 15 minutes. And what that does is it just and I'm not gonna say it freezes, but it sort of hardens that fat and that steak just enough that when you slice this, I'm gonna show you. Um, you can take the fat cap off really easy without your knife slipping around because that's really dangerous. And then look, look how much easier it is to slice it because it's the texture. You can just sort of, it's more stable. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna go ahead and slice it as thin as I can while getting rid of the major fat caps. Like for me, this is fine because it's little, that one's fine. That I'm gonna get rid of. Um, and then I'm gonna add it all to a large bowl. All right, beef is all thinly sliced. It's in a large bowl. To this, I'm gonna add a little sprinkling of cornstarch. And all that really does is when I go to cook it, is it just helps the beef adhere to that sauce a little bit better. You can skip it if you want to. A little bit of soy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a little mix. And I'm gonna get that going. Now, I don't have a wok. Actually, I'm lying to you. I do have a wok. However, I really need one of those bases to my, my stove. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where you can take this thing off. Uh, we can take the, the grid, I don't even know what it's called. I always wanna call it the grid, but where you could take that off and you put the wok base on it so that the heat can really sort of mold itself around the wok. I don't have one of those, okay? So I'm just gonna use a large skillet. You're gonna do this in batches because one of the things that I feel like can take a stir fry from great to meh, is when you steam everything rather than creating beautiful flavors, beautiful color, a beautiful sear. We don't want that. If I were to add all the beef at once, the beef will sear and it, it, the beef will steam and it won't sear. And that's not what I want. So to a large skillet, I'm just using my stainless steel. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. This is regular, not extra virgin, so the flavor is really mild. While that preheats, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm probably just gonna cut like half of a green bell pepper, half of a red and half of an orange. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I am making like under a pound of beef. So I don't wanna use too many peppers. Um, however, I want all the colors <laughs> because I just think it's prettier. But really in total, you need about two bell peppers if you're using one pound. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give them a nice chop like that. I want them to be really chunky. I don't want these veggies to get really soft because my favorite thing about a stir fry is that the vegetables have like a really beautiful crispness to them. Um, so you're gonna cook them for not very long. So just have everything ready because once that is ready, you're gonna start cooking everything. Add half the beef, spread it around. That's gonna only cook for like a minute. So keep an eye on that. We'll flip it, we'll put it into a different plate when it's done. In the meantime, let's mix our sauce. I'm gonna add in my measuring cup, I'm gonna add some soy sauce. You're gonna add brown sugar. You're gonna go ahead and add some garlic and ginger, both grated or very finely minced. I'm just gonna go ahead and grate them because it's just easier for me. A little ginger. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of mirin. Everything will be listed on my website, of course. A little bit of sambal, because I want some spiciness, but not too much. You could use sriracha. I can't seem to be finding normal sriracha anywhere. 
cornstarch, a tiny bit of sesame oil, bing bong, and just a drop of rice vinegar. Beautiful. And then just mix this around and set it aside. Because once your sauce is done, at this point, the only thing we're going to be working on is searing the meat, which look at this. Look, look. That's what you want. I'm going to go ahead and add my next batch. Take this out in just a minute. Steak is done. Add another drizzle of oil to my skillet. Add my peps and my onions. This is so quick. I mean, if it takes you 15 minutes, um, it's usually because that it took you half that to cut the things because cooking it takes literally maybe 10 minutes, maybe. Not that long. Peppers and the onions are only gonna cook two minutes. I went ahead and turned the heat down when I was taking the steak out because it was splattering me and it got me on my arm. Um, so again, give it two minutes. And then we're gonna unite the steak, which is perfectly cooked, beautiful flavor, beautiful color. We got our sauce ready. We're ready to rock and roll. Once these start to just cook down for like literally one more minute. All right, let's add the steak back in. We are cooking with fire. Add your sauce. Beautiful. Watch what happens in like a minute. Oh, it immediately smells so good. It's already thickening up. Just give it, I'd say, a solid two minutes for that sauce to boil and thicken. You want that cornstarch to cook out, that raw cornstarch flavor. So that's really all you're doing here. And it's thick, it's glossy, it's delicious. You know exactly what's in it. You're not gonna feel bad after you're eating because sometimes all that sodium makes me feel a little bit pudgy and I can't wear my wedding ring. Um, this will make you feel like a delight, okay? It is just a delight. That's all I'm gonna say. It's delicious. I love it. And again, it won't take you long at all. Pair with some white rice, cauliflower rice, noodles, brown rice, whatever. It's perfection. That is done. Glossy, beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and add some scallions and some sesame seeds on top when I do go to serve it with my rice. Uh, but for now, I just wanna take a taste test. Get out of here. Oh, honestly, so good. So delicious. And in comparison to ordering out, I mean, you could feed four people here the same amount of money it costs to just order one. And I'm not saying don't order from your local places because that's what keeps your community thriving. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is if you live in the middle of nowhere and you don't have many to choose from, and sometimes they're closed because you decide you wanna have dinner at nine o'clock because you're Italian and Europeans eat that late, um, then you can make yourself, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh-huh, tender, sweet, salty, like a perfect balance of everything together. It's dynamite. Go to lartinthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. Please make this this weekend. Um, it's delicious. I will see you in the next one. Bye.